Thank you for joining us on Wavy News 10 Midday. I'm Katie Collette. We continue to follow the horrifying story out of Roanoke, where a TV reporter and her photographer were gunned down during a live interview. We'll take you back to yesterday morning. Around 6.45, WDBJ7 reporter Allison Parker and photojournalist Adam Ward were doing a live interview with local Chamber of Commerce member Vicki Gardner. That's when former WDBJ reporter Vester Flanagan approached the three from behind and opened fire. Parker and Ward died at the scene. Gardner was wounded. The incident was broadcast live on television, and Flanagan filmed the shooting from his perspective, posting it on social media. The shooter led police on a chase and eventually took his own life with a gunshot to the head. Tributes to the fallen news team have been pouring into the WDBJ newsroom. This morning's 5 a.m. newscast opened with photos of Parker and Ward as the on-air team remembered their colleagues. Shortly after 6.45 this morning, the news team joined hands, pausing before a moment of silence. And we have multiple crews in the area where the shooting took place, and 10 on your side is ready to bring you team coverage. We start in Roanoke outside the WDBJ7 studios where 10 on your side's Deanna LeBlanc has been all morning. And Deanna, the tributes for Allison and Adam have been pouring in throughout the community, but also all around the journalism world. Yeah, Katie, that's right. I spoke with the station general manager late last night, and he said he received phone calls from every continent around the world. He joked, he said, except Antarctica. And if you look behind me, you can see this is really just a small percentage of the media that are here now as this station has become front and center in the national news. But it's really about the reporters and the staff at WDBJ, and you can feel the sorrow in the air. You're watching them when we're standing here. They go into the building. They have to walk by this huge huge memorial of flowers and then now walk by two armed police officers guarding their front door. Now today we found out, excuse me, that uh, all morning long the flowers and their deliveries have been coming in as the memorial outside the popular television station here continues to grow. People are stopping by, they're saying a prayer, just pausing for a few moments outside. It's really the viewers especially, they had to watch yesterday morning's events unfold live in the morning on their living rooms. They tell me today the reality of what they witnessed and what a loss their community now faces is starting to sink in. I spoke with one woman, she says she watches WDBJ every morning. She lived in the same apartment complex as Vester Flanagan, the shooter. Here's what she had to say. They were like family to me, you know, um, you bring them into your home every morning, noon and night, and to get shot like this is devastating. And then you don't know who you're living with, you know, and it's, it's really devastating and my heart goes out to everybody. Yeah, and that woman again lives in the same apartment complex where Vester Flanagan lived. And she showed me this letter that management sent to residents, letting them know that they are increasing security there to give residents a peace of mind. That woman says that's all she needed so that she'll be able to sleep tonight. She said last night she simply just tossed and turned. She just felt so disturbed by everything that she was learning throughout the day. Now we'll have more from her tonight and much more from the scene here in Roanoke starting in our 150 minutes of news beginning at 4 o'clock. Live in Roanoke. I'm Deanna LeBlanc. 10 on your side. This morning, WDBJ General Manager Jeff Marks, alongside Chris Hurst, who is Allison's boyfriend, spoke about their fallen co workers on the Today Show. She made us take these pictures sometimes when I didn't even want to smile, but she brought a smile out of me that I didn't even know existed, and she did that with everybody else that she touched. And that's why I'm just so thankful that there are so many pictures of her and Adam together and so many pictures of her happiness. That's what we'll have forever. Hearst says he spends his time thinking about Allison and what she did for him and for everyone she came in contact with. And last night, Melissa Ott, the fiance of slain WDBJ photographer Adam Ward, shared a message on Facebook saying in part, getting married, having a family, buying a home, that's now taken. I'm not okay, and I won't be for a long time. But the enormous outpour of love and support from so many of you near and far is much appreciated. The only survivor of Wednesday's shooting is in stable condition in the hospital. Vicki Gardner was being interviewed by Parker when Flanagan opened fire. 
Gardner's husband says she's recovering after Flanagan shot her in the back. I spoke with Vicki for about um, three, four minutes while she was being transported to the, uh, the emergency room at Roanoke Memorial. Um, she explained what had happened to her and that um, she didn't know how she survived, but she did. Tim Gardner even told reporters Vicki got up and walked to the ambulance. Gardner was being interviewed during the WDBJ Morning News promoting a recreational area outside of Roanoke. Now, state police say a license plate reader helped them catch up with the suspect before he died. By that point, he'd traveled nearly 200 miles. 10 on your side's Aaron Kelly brings us the story in the words of the troopers involved. We're off of I-66 in Fauquier County, where about 24 hours ago, police say they began to catch up with the suspect. Police say 41-year-old Vester Flanagan, who used the name Bryce Williams on television, was in a rental car and left his own car at a Roanoke airport. According to police, a trooper was on patrol at around 11.30 on 66 East when her license plate reader alerted her to a Chevrolet Sonic. She says she followed it and waited for backup. With the information coming through, I knew I had the vehicle. We were unsure if it was the gentleman at all. After other units arrived, a traffic stop was initiated at the 15.6 mile marker. At that time, the only occupant of the vehicle did not slow and did not stop for police vehicles. It then continued on and at subsequently ran off the left side of the roadway at the 17.1 mile marker and struck an embankment. Officers then approached the vehicle and found that the lone occupant had suffered a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Flanagan, who was a former employee of WDBJ, died at a Fairfax hospital. Investigators say they plan to review a lengthy fax he sent a national news organization. They have not determined a motive in this shooting. In Fauquier County, Aaron Kelly, 10 on your side. Our crews remain in the area today and have complete coverage of the shooting starting on Wavy News 10 at 4. You can also head to wavy.com. There you'll find social media posts along with video of the police chase and how WDBJ is remembering Allison Parker and Adam Ward. All of that coverage is right there on our homepage.